we have Mr. Bubba on the line and then also Ashley there and they are in the world of esports. So Bubba, tell us what is esports and tell us about your organization because a lot of people this is kind of new language for. So tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are and what is esports. Yeah, thank you guys for letting us be on this panel. This is amazing. Uh, just the dedication to engage with students is huge. I really applaud what you're doing, guys and and ladies. Just um, keep keep part of the network and and uh, also you know don't let your counselor your freshman year give you 22 credit hours. Okay, that's my big my big tip for you right now. Uh, your freshman year is important. You know don't don't let them over over bury with too many classes. Uh, esports. So yeah, I'm Bubba Getter of the Varsity Esports Foundation. We're here in Kansas City on the River Market and um, we're we'll, we'll working from home right now. But uh, esports is electronic sports. Um, it's competitive video gaming. Uh, it's about a $1.5 billion industry around the world. Uh, video gaming is and most of that half of that is actually mobile. So if you play Candy Crush, you know, Claude, I'm sure you might do some word with friends. I'm sure you have some word with friends. Uh, you're you're a gamer. Did you know that you're an actual gamer because you're a part of that 150 billion dollar uh, industry? Uh, there's about 200,000 high-paid workers in the U.S. that are employed through um, esports. Uh, you'll talk. You'll hear from Ashley here in a minute, and they work. Uh, we also work with the National Association of Collegiate Esports here in Kansas City. That's a national organization. And they're all part of about $20 million in scholarships for colleges out there. And actually, a lot of that goes unused because there's not enough students from high school in the pipeline to actually receive that, which is like, which is another topic, uh, kind of like female crew or female um, rowing uh, across the country. There's always a, a, a lack of amount of players uh, for those scholarships. So really in esports, there's about 3,000 high school clubs around the country who play competitively at their own school and play against other schools through partners like the High School Esports League or the National Association of Scholastic Esports Federation. And there's about 3,000 colleges that have esport clubs and it's really gaming. And usually they're always the largest club on campus. Uh, and sometimes they are the, the largest clubs on campus that also receive you know, funding from universities at, a, at different levels. But in the sense of what we do as a foundation is we just help that pipeline through scholarships and grants. We do about $350,000 in grants a year through our organization, through partners like High School Esports League and eFuse, which is the LinkedIn of esports. And really anybody's a gamer, 45% of females are actually gamers. And that's a big thing. We're working with a lot of people like Facebook Gaming who really wanna promote uh, female in, ga uh, in gaming. And we believe that toxicity with females and gaming is also a big issue. And we just we just like to approach that uh, in a fundamental proactive way uh, against the uh, issues in gaming, which which society tells us to stay in your basement and eat Doritos and Red Bull. And we don't say that to we don't say that to football players. Right. Even though I was one, I'm both um, it's society. We just got to help understand that gaming actually has STEM related opportunities. And that's what we are. We're a STEM accredited organization to support uh, organizations or schools, I should say, uh, to be a pipeline for students through that lens of esports for college and career readiness. So, Bubba, to qualify for the scholarships that you have available, is there a, a particular career path that a student has to take? Or if someone is interested in the world of gaming, what's some advice that you would give on the career path that they should take? Because it's not something that is facilitate a lot in high schools. Mm -hmm. So I guess a two part question. Sure. Yeah. Great question. We get that a lot because a lot of people think, well, I got to do esports college and I'll be all about esports and gaming. I'm sure Ashley will tell you too, that uh, she's got uh, students in every different degree opportunity. Um, most students, just like football players playing or basketball players or whatever it may be as a sport, um, even drama uh, or theater for you, Holly, theater. I mean, that could be your major, but maybe you have like another minor, obviously. But even those activity related scholarships on sp the sport, traditional sports side, most all students, actually all students have a degree outside of sports. Um, well, have other degrees besides uh, maybe traditional sports that they would apply for. Business is a common 
common degree seeking opportunity for uh, those in uh, division one, division two college opportunities. But really we like to support students to play competitively in safe environments at their high schools so they can actually have community. You can be male, female, black, white, have be in a wheelchair and you don't have to have separate teams for that. You can be on one team and it's really not designed for the kids in high school who actually already have uh, some activities to do. It's designed for those kids who don't have activities already. And what they do is, yes, they are able to have social interaction, uh, critical thinking, team building, and be able to be a team. And then we also see through our STEM accredited curriculum that these students, uh, their GPA is going up by 1.7 and their attendance is going up by 10% because as you guys know, if you played traditional sports like I did in high school, you want to get good grades so you can suit up and, and play, or you want to have good grades so you can be on you know, theater production or whatever it may be. So their scholarship opportunities are competitive in the high school where you can play competitively. And then we will send money to your student account at the college you're choosing to go to for whichever degree that you choose to be there for. That's awesome. What is the quick, quick question? What is the minimum size of the, um, the teams that are at the eSports high school league? Like what, how many mm -hmm. normal students do you see on an average team? Sure. So, I mean, 20 is, 20 is kind of an average uh, uh, amount of people in the club. Uh, but then, uh, as, as you know, there's a lot of games. So let's say, let's compare it to, let's compare it to the track team. Like the track team maybe have uh, a team of four that are running relays, but let, let, let's say that's one game. Um, like Fortnite, you can play with four people in a, in a game and play against other people that have four people on their team, just like a track and field relay team. Or you have, like in wrestling, you have individual matches where you play individually games. So the club size can be 20. We've got, we've got teams in the high school esports league that have 150 students in their club, uh, and they're wow. all playing different things. But I will also mention that they're not all the gamers. There's also students that are IT. Uh, they're doing audio video. They're doing... Um, they're doing uh, stream streaming or like like live casting. Uh, they're commentating or you even ha it's just like traditional sports. Like in a basketball team, you have a, a team manager, equipment manager, a water boy, towel person. You know, you have all those other the, the, uh, extra activities that people can do inside that team that are part of the team. Wow. And last question. And my oldest daughter wants to be in broadcast journalism. But as a dad, I'm just throwing the question out there. How does broadcast journalism tie into this new wave of, of esports? Yeah, so let's just just take the you know the NBA three weeks ago. First of all, let's 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 uh, reference that the NBA. Uh, let's say you are um, involved in the NBA. Well, think about all the all the different careers in the NBA from the janitor to the the commentator. I mean, you've got people in media and marketing production. You've got people in facility management, you've got social media, you've got every type of field you can think of to put on an event at a basketball arena or even through TNT. So now just take that, that, that word MBA and switch it to eSport. It's the exact same career opportunities uh, that, are, that are available for traditional sports as well as for eSports. Wow.